the end of everything, hold on to anything. When all meaning has dropped from the world, and even the mere act of leaving one's room is terrifying, is that not the end of everything? Night in the Woods asks the question of what one should do in the face of an ontological crisis of world-shattering magnitude. May, the main character, suffers a psychological breakdown that leads to a dangerous and nihilistic outlook. Her inability to cope with this new outlook causes her to seek meaning in places that were once meaningful. However, May finds that her past has physically disappeared, and the only path back to meaning is by creating new meaning. May suffers a serious psychological break prior to the beginning of the game. It is described by her as seeing everything as just shapes. Just like this moving bulk of stuff, nothing was there for me anymore. May's crisis is a breakdown of the meaning of the world, or what we'll call an ontological crisis. A shape is an object which is defined exclusively by its appearance and function, not so much by its relation to other objects. Thereby, May's ontological crisis focuses on her inability to determine relation in the entities around her. Objects have been wrested from any understanding beyond their simple being. An example of a system breaking down in this manner could be seen in May's description of the tree outside of her house. Prior to her crisis, May viewed the tree as a friend outside the window. The tree was defined by its relationship to May, that being their apparent friendship. In that relationship, there was implied meaning, as any relationship has a significant history behind it. Her ontological crisis left the tree being just a thing that was there, growing and eating and just being there. The meaningful relationship that May had with the tree has been replaced by exclusively form and function. By having the understanding of the tree be wrested from any relationship, the tree also becomes separate from the entities around it. Going off of exclusively form and function, the tree no longer cares about May. Its form and function are completely unrelated to anything that May is doing, turning the tree into an uninterested observer into May's life, instead of a caring friend. Hence, May laments that nothing was there for her anymore, because everything that was now seen as shapes has no relation to or care for May at all. As May's crisis is caused by a breakdown of ontology, she responds to it by trying to recapture some of the meaning that existed in her prior life. May chooses to return home because Possum Springs is a place where I knew everyone, and it wasn't just dead shapes. Even in the face of her ontological crisis, the old connections that May had were not completely destroyed. Some semblance of relation was still relevant for May since her home was not dead shapes. In the process of trying to regain her old ontology, May looks to regain her old relational nucleation sites and her old relationships. I'm sure that relational nucleation sites sounds rather technical, but it just refers to spots where relationships were consistently formed. In the case of May, the diner Postabilities is a good example, as that is a place where she fostered relationships on a consistent basis. A relational nucleation site is also a place of meaning, in that these places represent the bonds that were created therein. Possum Springs, her home, and of course the diner are all prime examples of relational nucleation sites that May is trying to return to in an attempt to recapture meaning. May's other attempt to regain her old ontology is her clinging to past relationships. Bea and Greg were both old friends of May, thereby also being entities of significant meaning. May attempts to pick up her old relationships as though no time had passed, thereby trying to preserve the meaning that had existed prior. Despite May's best attempts to return to her ontological roots, the past that she is looking for has vanished. Her relational nucleation sites were all either destroyed or became threatened. Postabilities closed its doors, thereby completely obliterating that site and relegating the meaning inherent to that location to only memory. May's home was threatened by her very attempt to find meaning. This caused a twofold collapse of May's old ontological world. The first was in the potential destruction of one of her most meaningful relational nucleation sites, her home. The other, which is just as impactful, is the effect that the potential loss of May's home had on her relationship with her mother. A familial relationship hung in the balance, thereby shaking up the very building blocks of May's world. 
all of May's most meaningful locations were being destroyed in front of her. May's old relational meaning was no longer attainable either. Her relationship with Greg at least remained mostly unchanged in the beginning. However, Greg soon revealed that he has a plan to move away from Possum Springs to a town called Bright Harbor. By revealing his plans to move, Greg has put a timer on May's ability to tap her old relationship. Beyond the simple timer, May finds that the entire way of life that she is pursuing through Greg, that being her old lifestyle prior to college, is unattainable. Greg has already left it behind, with May only causing a momentary resurgence. These massive changes would destroy any attempt for May to regain the old meaning that was inherent in Greg's relationship. In the case of Bea, May is trying to grasp at something that has already disappeared. As May is returning from the first party, she asks Bea why they had changed, noting, and I'm paraphrasing here because she was drunk talking like nobody's business, Remember when I used to call you BB and you called me Mayday? To which Bea responds, Oh, you mean when we were like 10? No, I don't. May is trying to call upon a very old relationship, that being the relationship between BB and Mayday. No doubt May is calling upon this particular aspect of their relationship because it is the most meaningful to her. In spite of May's attempts to suss it out, the relationship between BB and Mayday does not exist anymore. To Bea, it cannot even be remembered. The ontology that May was looking to find in her relationship with Bea has long since been lost to time. It is only in this car ride that May realizes that it is actually out of her reach. None of the old ontologies in May's relationships are able to be regained to their fullness. After her best attempts to regain her past ontologies, May finds herself in an ontological void. There is no way that she can regain meaning by returning to her past because her past, like the time it inhabited, has long since slipped away from her. The relationships that built the backbone of her world are irreparably changed, and the relational nucleation sites that held so much meaning are all vanishing before her. Unlike her time at college, this ontological void is one that May is, in the very least, capable of dealing with. Each of May's relationships shows a different attempt to create or recapture ontologies. Bea shows a whole new system of ontology based on the foundation of duty, while at once creating a new relational meaning in May's ontology. Greg, on the other hand, showcases the ineffectuality of returning to May's old lifestyle. In the end, May is forced to either choose a new ontological system, or be left in the quagmire of a meaningless existence. Both of the relationships, along with May's final choice, will be examined in the next few episodes. For now, a quick recap, because there was a lot of stuff in this video. We determined that May's breakdown was specifically an ontological one, where relation was obliterated, leaving only form and function. In an attempt to combat said crisis, she returned to the source of her old ontologies, Possum Springs. However, every source of meaning that she tried to regain was cut off to her, whether due to the fact that her relationships changed or the destruction of old relational nucleation sites. In the end, May is left to create a new ontological system. The two key relationships she has, those being with Greg and Bea, each highlight a different aspect of her potential new ontology. In the next episode, we will delve deeper into the particulars of May's relationship with Greg. Until then, thanks for watching and, as always, enjoy the rest of your day.